Um, so there's, there are a lot of opportunities for kind of training and support. I think, you know, again, weekly we do that didactic professional development in the mm-hmm. form that you usually think of it. But sometimes I think the most valuable learning comes from the hands-on, you know, work with kids yes. when there is, you know, someone who is a bit more experienced overlapping and disseminating information like in the moment to, yeah. to someone who's, who's newer. I definitely like that. Online. Yeah. So I can't speak to other charter schools, but we have created a very specific rubric for our staff. I know a lot of, um, I think at least some portion of staff evaluations in most traditional schools ties into student performance to a certain extent. Yes. That's not really, the, it, it, that doesn't make sense for our kids because, you know, it's just, it's just not the same. You know, some, mm-hmm. some kids acquire skills more slowly than others, and that's not a reflection of the teachers per se. Mm-hmm. So what we really look at is how, they, how effective they are at implementing teaching. Um, so we break that down into very tiny components there's a lot of observation that's involved and they're, you know, kind of rated on a scale in terms of how they're, how, what their actual teaching looks like, both one-to-one group instruction for teachers. We're also looking at how they're supervising their staff and how they're training other people. Cause that's mm-hmm. an important part of their job. Um, and then we also look a lot at just like profession, what I'll call professionalism metrics, which is just like, how do you interact with other people? How do you interact mm-hmm. with parents and families um, cause that's you know, important. that stuff is really important. It makes for, yeah, it makes for either a, a nice or not nice working environment. Yeah. yeah. One thing I do like about, um, the charter school system is that teachers that are not, um, performing or are not, uh, really there for the right reasons in one way or another are filtered out, which I really you know, that's where I I love public schools because I'm a public school kid, but mm-hmm. that's where I, I find that there's a tip to the scale for me because there's definitely teachers in the public school system that should have retired a long time ago or they're not there for the right reasons or they're, you know, their they're, they're teaching methods are, are outdated and are not willing to change because there are people that like, during the pandemic, for example, my mom has been teaching for over 25 years already. Amazing. During the pandemic, she was like, okay, teach me this Google Classroom stuff. You know, <laughs> she was ready to learn. But then yeah. being the technology head in the in the um, school where I was teaching at, I was having teachers still resisting the change. So it's like, you know, there, there's people that are have been teaching for a while that are willing to change and are going with the times and like open to, you know, bettering their practice. But then there's also teachers that are still stuck in their old ways and are doing the things that they've been doing for the past 20 years, which isn't effective anymore. That is not the way the children, that that children learn, especially in the type of model that you're in. Um, You know, you guys are really going by what the students need and not necessarily by what, uh, the public, not the public school system, but just like education in general, how it's been in the United States for the past hundred and change years, you know? So- but we try really hard to meet people where they are and give them the support and training that allow them to be successful, if at all possible. But the bottom line is, you're right. I mean, my first priority is my kids and family. So mm-hmm. they, they are always going to come first. I have made many friends in the charter sector, at least in New York City. And I know charter schools also across the country, very different, like charter schools in other states, very different from charter Mm -hmm. schools in New York. You know, these are all passionate educators who really want to do well by their students and families who the ones that I've met who are, you know, committed to trying to lift up communities that have, I think, have been maybe underserved when it comes to the, the, the school systems in those those different communities and who really want to get in and give kids who maybe haven't had a lot of uh, a shot at higher education, let's say an equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that, you know, that I, I, I know a subset of folks, so I can only speak to the people that I'm, I'm friends with and, and know, but certainly in terms of charter schools and their fit with the special education population in theory or 
kids like ours. I think it's, it's, I wish there were more special education focused charter schools where, you know, again, it's, it's very different, you know, when you're talking about any school that sort of serves a neurotypical population, then being able to support kids with special needs, it, it gets tricky, especially when the special needs become, you know, significant, mm, like, yes. like with our kids. But I think the idea of having charter schools that are really focused on these special communities um, it's kind of a great fit in a lot of ways because yeah. again, as I said, you know, there's this, there's this push on innovating and individualizing and doing things differently, which has really allowed us to create this program that, um, that is so effective for the, the kids that we serve. I mean, also that parents, you know, your child best and make sure that you're doing research before you just go and apply for whatever charter school. Cause a lot of the parents, at least in the community where I teach at, um, they do pre-K in my school, and then all of a sudden they're pulling them out and putting them in charter school. In our school, we're like trying to help the parent realize that the child needs services because they're in denial and they feel like the charter school, you know, which is not yours, another charter school is going to help them. And unfortunately, they're not equipped to service that child. Um, and a lot, of, unless they're specialized like your school, a lot of them don't have the setting for your child. So it's big mm -hmm. classroom, not big, big, but still like they're not going to get mm -hmm. that individualized attention that they need. So make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, before you go and put your child in the charter school, you're doing your research and, and making sure that whatever the teachers are suggesting in the public school, that you're going and exploring that because a lot of the time you're doing a disservice to your child, especially when you're pulling them out of one setting and dropping them in another. Um, Definitely. That, I think yeah. no matter what, you're absolutely right. I think you have to do your homework because not all charter schools are created equal. Class sizes are different. Their structure and models are different. Their ability to serve specialized populations are different. And I think, you know, you definitely, there's no point in putting your child in an environment where they can't benefit from being there. Yes. You, you know, they have to be able to benefit and that's going to look different for different kids. Mom, I just want to 